Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. First of all, I apologize for getting in so late today. Uh, a lot going on I had to get done, but I did want to still stop in and hit on today's topic. Today is Wednesday, so it's Relationship Wednesday. We're going to talk over the next several months about different facets and elements and components of building strong, positive, lasting relationships. Uh, this isn't coming from someone who puts himself on some pedestal of having all the answers and knowing everything and getting it perfect all the time. Uh, this is from trial and error. This is from years of studying and understanding and seeing what works, what doesn't work. Being willing to look within oneself to discover why something didn't work without placing blame on someone else. This is me pouring out to you what I've discovered. And we're going to take this journey together. I'm going to give you what I can give you from an area of an expert, but I'm going to tell you that I am still a work in progress. Uh, but I can tell you what has worked for me, uh, what continues to work for me, what I stay away from, how I tend to view things. And we're going to move along and we're going to talk about some things that I think have some great gravity. We're going to talk about what I call the myth of dating. Not today, but we're definitely going to get into all of that. Before I get started, I do want to remind you uh, that for a limited time, for the last time, we're offering the Rapid Change Breakthrough Program, which is taking what I created uh, that that's known as the rapid change session, which is a one-time session that I have with a client. Normally it's $350. It's a one-time session. And we touch on something that is inhibiting them, that's stopping them. And we get to the core of it. We deal with it. We release it. We open it up and we move forward with the ability to now take off. Well, we're doing that in three sessions now and with a total price of $150. This is never going to happen again because I simply can't take the volume but I do want to do it. So this is the last go round. If you have not worked with me before, this is a chance to do it at a very, very reasonable cost. Uh, like I said, one session with me, uh, for which normally runs about an hour is $350 and you get your value. Trust me, I'm worth it. Uh, but, uh, the link is in the description box, no matter where you're watching this video, I want to get to what I got get to, because I do have a client in like 20 minutes. Uh, and I don't want to be late for that, but I did not want to push this video off any further. So I've been trying to jump in between clients and it just hasn't happened. But now I'm going to talk to you. I was riding um, to the office this morning and uh, listening to the Ricky Smiley morning show, uh, which replaced the Tom Jordan morning show in the market here in Houston. Um, and it's taken some use to getting to, uh, I, you know, I do it because I want a light start to my day. Uh, I've usually done my prayer meditation and, you know, guided meditation and stuff in the morning. And then I'm going to do it again when I get to the office, but I want something light, something that'll make me laugh. You know, uh, some of the things I don't agree with politically and stuff like that. I just learned how to turn it off. But anyway, Eva Marcel, uh, formerly known as Eva Pickford, she's married now, uh, and she has her own little segment on there about love and uh i forget what it's called Eva's corner or something like that she also has a new podcast with a couple of other young ladies but anyway she's talked about eating lunch by herself and this guy coming up who was a fan of her and a fan of the ricky smiley morning show and has got to talking to her but he mentioned the fact that uh you know he had fell in love and he just wanted you know to know if it was okay for her to offer him advice being that he was a man and she said hey whatever and so the story he told was he met a woman fell in love with her fell in love with her children on top of it married her not so much because of her he knew that was some things that he should have been paying attention to not paying attention to the red flags that's a whole nother set been there here's the thing after a while of doing this like down the line she decides he's no longer good for her, whatever bottom line he was a, a, a provider a support he was giving her everything she had never had and the pandemic hit and his business took a hit and so all of a sudden 
he wasn't the gleam in her eye anymore. She went and found somebody else, got a bar friend, told him about it. And he actually let him, he said, if you don't want to be with me, fine, he let her go. But for the sake of the kids, he's allowing her to stay in the house. So all kind of things are going on with this that definitely shouldn't be happening. But at the core of it, he's decided to let her go on with her life. But he hasn't moved on with his. And Eva asked him why. And he said, well, you, you, you get to a point when you're my age where, you know, the point of falling in love has passed. And he had kind of given up on love. And so she posed the question, can someone at a certain age, is there a cutoff age for falling in love? Uh, that's this thing going on with this camera on the computer. Uh, and I haven't figured it out yet where it comes in and comes out. So you guys are going to have to forgive that. Uh, once I figure it out, <laughs> hopefully it'll be okay. Uh, but uh, anyway, is there a cutoff time where, okay, no longer you, you, you're no longer going to fall in love, but the giddy feelings and all that stuff that goes on when you fall in love, all that stuff uh, is past. Is there a point in time? What's the question? And the immediate response, I think, was very prevalent. I think it was very wise. Uh, and it was simply this, is we've over-romanticized love. And so, yes, when you over-romanticize love and you think about all of the stuff that people tend to associate with love, the giddy feelings, the, the, the uh, oh, my God, they're perfect feeling that you get when you first meet someone, especially when you're young. You know, you fall in love and it's, it's the, oh, my God, thing. And you start to get older. What, what, what happens when you get older is life's experiences tend to tame the emotions. So you don't get excited about as much as you got excited about when you were young because you tend to know behind the excitement of the moment comes the truth and the reality of the process. And so in, when you meet someone, you may not get that, oh, my God, ooh, ooh, ooh feeling because you know the work is about to start after that. And see, that's what's wrong now is that we've romanticized relationships to the point that when the feeling subsides uh, or he no longer has a six pack or she no longer has that bang, 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 then all of a sudden is this, or when his, his job lets him go. See, it wasn't really, it was all hung up. It's the romanticized, my Prince Charming is gonna come along, rescue me from this horrible life, take me off on his beautiful white steed, and we're gonna live happily ever after. But here's the problem that, that, that romanticize, romanticizing relationships does. There is no such thing as happily ever after. We're dealing with humanity. We're dealing with human people. We're dealing with people who have imperfections. One thing that has allowed me to love my wife in the time that we've been together, no matter what is going on, and to be deeply rooted in my love for her is that I respect her humanity. I actually love her humanity. What am I saying about her when I say that she's not perfect, that she's not going to walk out every day, say everything I want her to say, do everything I want her to do, and feel like I want her to feel. She's human. She's going to have days where I'm getting on her nerves, that my imperfections are weighing on her nerves, and that I've got to know as her husband how to be the best of myself at the time she's the worst of herself. Let me say that again. The beauty of true love is when the person you love is having a bad day and they're not at the apex of their game and all of the things that you fell in love with that aren't shining forth at the moment. That's when love drives you to become the best of yourself to uphold them in that moment. And then they do it for you when you're having a bad day, when you're having a bad week, when things aren't going your way. They rise to the occasion and they become the best. The beauty about love isn't finding someone that does and everything you do like you do it, act like you do, speak like you do. Think It's to find someone that is greater and stronger in areas of your weakness so that when you grow into those weaknesses in any given moment, they have the strength to pull you through that. And it is an equal thing. And the thing is, we've romanticized it. So it's about where he's buying, what, what he's buying me, what she's doing for me, how she did this, how he does that. And so we've romanticized love at a level that we can't possibly live up to. Now, you got to really actually look at this from a historical perspective. I've written on this. Matter of fact, the book 
Uh, my latest release, well, it won't be my latest release after Friday. Friday, I'm re releasing book number 24, but book number 23, Merging Souls, Healing, Hope, and Restoration in Martyr Marriage. I talk about this, that you have to understand that the, the, the romantic notion, as we see it today, didn't even enter into marriage until the 12th or 13th century. So it's relatively new speaking because you're talking about thousands and thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years where there was no such thing as romance. It wasn't about whining and dining and swooping someone off the feet. It was actually about knowing someone had the same values as you. So that meant, normally meant they came from a family that was similar to your family, from a background in faith that was similar to your family, that that person, the female, had been reared on the importance of her role as a wife. The male had been reared on, reared on the importance of the role as a husband, and that when they came together, the love that they just experienced and that they grew into was a love that was born out of watching their mate live up to their role. It was about saying, I'm expecting this from a husband because I've been taught and told this is what husbands do. And while I'm expecting this as a wife, this is what I'm delivering. As a husband, I have been taught that this is my role to provide, to protect, to cover, to provide a spiritual covering, to provide a sense of identity from my progeny. This is my responsibility. I'm going to live up to that. And as I do that, I'm observing my wife living up to the role that I was advised she would live up to. And in her doing so, she is honoring my honoring a covenant and honoring a promise and a vow that she made to me and in that I am sensing a growth of love a love that is developed not out of a sense of infatuation with an idea but within the foundation of the delivery of a promise made and that's what we have now so the thing is, love never dies in the heart. You can bury the desire for it because you have become frustrated with the idea. But the yearning is still there no matter how suppressed it may be. The truth is that there's always someone out there for you. The problem is we have learned that we tend to give ourselves to those who mean us no good. And we have become disenfranchised with the idea of being loved. Some of us have even been convinced that we are undeserving of love because of our past decisions and past situations. And so we have decided that it doesn't live here any longer and we're not going to do it. And we settle into situations and circumstances that tend to put us in a place that lower our frequency thereby disconnecting us from our divine source and leaving us to meander and flounder in, in, in mediocrity. And I'm not just talking in the relationship, now I'm talking in life, period. But it starts with understanding the power of the relationship to bring about so many di different powerful things. But the same thing happens when we discount the importance of managing our relationships appropriately. So then you have to a special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood and so many other things uh, the information will be in the box thank you
From a conceptual perspective, people talk about it as all of the elements.